Hello friends, family and other creatures of the sea and welcome back to a high level best of five from the most recent Intellect Stream Masters Katowice in the top left as a blue Zerg player playing for Team Basilisk. It is of course a Serral. And in the bottom right as a red Zerg player playing for Alpha X is Ragnarok. Ragnarok versus Serral. An exciting match here. And a match that uh, hopefully is going to uh, last us a little while. Both players opening up with a hatch first, or hatch first into gas, into pool, most standard of openers. We do see Serra with slightly more gas as he pulled into gas. And uh, Ragnarok most likely with slightly more minerals as he didn't pull into gas. Interesting to see. Ooh, later Overlord as well for Ragnarok. Does that mean faster third base? Or did he just make a mistake? <laughs> he accidentally gets a supply block. It's possible. I think he accidentally got some fly block. He's floating a lot of money there. <laughs> or is it a new build order, maybe? I don't know. Get supply block at 28 and then don't build a hatchery. Because there are certain builds in which you get supply block at 28 and then you build a hatchery and you get unsupply block, build one more drone, and then your overlord finishes. It's called the uh, Clash Opener, as the Clash Zerg players uh, kind of figured that one out, Lambo and Elaser, back when they were in Team Clash. Of course, now Elaser in Liquid, Lambo in Shopify Rebellion. I think that was in probably 2018, 2017, so oh, four or five years ago. Every single time I say year, like, like, like dates, or especially years, and I'm like, man, that's already so long ago. And yesterday someone told me that uh, Ice Age is more than 20 years old and I cried a little bit on the inside. I was like, there's no way. Ice Age is from like 2004 and then it was from 2002. So it's actually, yeah, tw 21 years ago that Ice Age got released. For me, that was one of the first movies that I truly remember, remember, you know, it's like watching that movie. I was like, man, that's super cool. Uh, I was pretty late with creating memories. I was eight. Anyway, we have Serral starting with a, a bunch of painlings across the map, followed up by drones. Uh, Link Flood could get a cancel here on this base. Tries to go for the queens. Instead gets one or two links. Ooh. Needs to be careful, though, because these banes are about to finish up as well. Can he snipe a queen before that happens? Yes, he definitely can. Wants to trade this as well. Uh-oh. Ragnarok in a world of trouble right here. Straight away off the bat. Within four minutes, first queen gets taken out already. Uh, Serral does commit into this base. Rather than going for the kill on the third hatchery, which in hindsight definitely seems like it would have been possible. Serral continues putting on the pressure here. He's even building more links behind this. He's up three drones as well. He's going to get the connection with the drones. Oh, only gets through wor two worker kills for now. That's not going to be uh, quite enough for worker kills. More and more drones in production for Shadow behind this as Ragnarok also wants to get set back up. Ten more links on the way. Carapace as well as a Roach Warren for the Finnish Zerg player for Team Basilisk. Uh, who's up 10 supply after some fantastic early game pressure. I'm not sure if this was better than trying to go for the third base. Perhaps Serral saw this as less of a risk and more of a certain payoff. And it definitely did pay off. Uh, well, at least a little bit nice block here as well. Out of the Queen Clutch move here. As uh, no scout comes in. Not on Serral's watch. Plus one range on the way for Ragnarok, while plus one carapace on the way for Serral, and Serral already going up to three gases as well, so seems to me like he's following this up with a carapace, a uh, plus one carapace all in. He's getting his own baits once again, continues putting on the pressure, nice control on those links, does not quite get the kills on those banes, but now he's sending in some, some rocket links to, to try and uh, force these banes into exploding. Definitely works out, one more drone's going to get uh, completely blasted here as well. More links going down. I think Saros is actually straight up winning the game over here. Takes out, what, two, three more drones. Gets some good trades. Builds ten roaches behind this. Make sure he doesn't get supply blocked. As this first game is looking absolutely fabulous. Saros on the point right now in this uh, series so far. Just uh, going back and forth with these links. To the left, to the right. He's everywhere. Snipes this drone. No, doesn't quite get it. Needs to be careful. Doesn't want to over overcommit here as the follow-up all-in is of course the thing that's really going to matter Ragnarok right now desperately holding dr down that drone button saying hey I actually want to you know drone up I need to make sure I don't die the funny thing is is that despite Serral all-inning he is still up in workers and usually that'd be a very bad sign if you're all-inning into someone and you're you're up in workers because it probably means your opponent is also all inning. But this time around, it just means that <laughs> Ragnarok has absolutely no drones and had a garbage early game. 
Um, does have plus one missile attacks done, though. That was fairly fast. Has a bunch of roaches out as well. And I'm not entirely sure if this is going to be a 100% win for Serral. And there are some advantages that Ragnarok is, is kind of carving out behind all of this for himself. First is Roach Fight. Carapace versus Range. Range is favored in that case. This is Pure Roach versus Pure Roach. I'm not so sure why Serral is already engaging without his massive Ling lead being around as well. I think he's kind of throwing away a bit of his lead here. Follows this up with a lair and plus one range right now, but the lair is... No, got cancelled. I thought it was already done for Ragnarok, but I guess it isn't. Did get cancelled. Um, eight more drones on the way as well for Ragnarok. Yeah, this... It feels like a lot of the the lead that Sarrow had has now been thrown out of the window. And if anything, it might be Ragnarok who's in a little bit of a lead. And that's because, yes, the supplies are even. Yes, the worker counts are close. Sure, Lair is faster here for Sarrow. But majority of the supply for Sarrow is in links, which are practically useless in a mid game. So there's about, what, is 50-ish links? So like 25 supply in useless units. And Sarrow wants it to get rid of them, tries to go for an engagement, but there's simply too many roaches. So this isn't entirely working out right now. It is not entirely working out. A couple of drones went down here. It must have been some bailing bombs running by. Clio Reconstitution as well as Plus One is on the way here for our uh, Basilisk Zerg. There's a lot of gas being mined. Look at this. What is that? Five gas of... 54 workers. I guess Sarah has the same thing, right? Five gas. It's not mining uh, with three in each gas. So Ragnarok moves out. Link's coming in from the back. Sarah's gonna go for a defense here. 21 roaches, two ravagers against 31 roaches. Plus one not quite done yet. There's no glial reconstitution on the way. I still think that Sarah is, is doing fairly okay in this case. He just needs to make sure that he can survive this attack. And with the Ling coming from the back, there we go. This is going to be a relatively easy hold, I think. Ravager's going to connect with their Biles on top of these roaches. 150 supply against 111. Saro, of course, completely fine. GG gets called. Game number one goes to the Finn. That was a fairly convincing win for Saro. I do believe that he almost threw it away a little bit by not having those links in the major roach fight should have definitely waited engaging with those roaches until the links could join i mean if you have 35 uh to 40 links with plus one carapace they really do add a lot of tanking power in front of your own roaches and yeah i'm a little bit disappointed that the Cero didn't go for that but still uh, showing us that he's completely capable of taking the game uh, afterwards. As Ragnarok's all-in didn't work out with that plus one. Ragnarok did hit a nice time. It was like 10 seconds before Serral's plus one finished, before Serral's Glyo reconstitution finished, but Serral just had so many units, it didn't even matter. Similar build order openers here as last game. This time it's going to be on Royal Blood. What is this? The drone looks so big when it's in there. Maybe it's like one of these funny mirrors, you know? Like one of these, not a mirror, but like one of these glass that makes everything look big, like a fish eye, fish eye glass. So the drone looks massive, just swimming around there in the pool. This drone's gotta be pretty dizzy. It's a crap life as a drone, isn't it? You walk around, you smell, no one likes you. You have a weird squiggly tail. Then you go into a building and you're just constantly turning left. And then you're a building. Not sure if the Zerg buildings are sentient. Don't think they are. So then you're just there. You're, you're dead. And the last thing you feel is just being dizzy. Struggling to get any, you know, oxygen in there as well. God, life sucks as a drone. And these buildings do seem somewhat alive, right? The way that they move. Metabolic boost is on the way for both players. So it's the same build order here out of Ragnarok. That weird supply, but I think it's just worse. I'm gonna have to ask some jerks about that. I'm curious now. Seems like a weird build. I've never seen this any, anyone else do it, so there must be something there that it, it, it's not correct. Or Ragnarok figured something out that no one else has. That's also possible, but slightly less likely. Usually, especially in mirror matchups, if something is very good, other people will just copy it quickly because you'll always see it in the mirror matchup, right? 
It's not necessarily true. Imagine someone does a certain thing in Zerg versus Terran, and you need to pay very close attention to understand it. That's not the case because you know the, the Terran players don't really see it because it's too 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 intricate of a detail for them to notice. So they don't tell their Zerg friends, and Zerg players might only be capable of figuring it out after getting their re th their hands on a replay of a, of a certain thing. But in a ZVZ, every opponent is going to be interested on in your in, in your build order as well. You know. They're going to be looking through it be like, hey, it does something different. I wonder if that's better. They'll test it out and then realize, no, it's not better. Or yes, it's better. Then they'll copy it or they won't copy it. So the fact that no one else plays this kind of makes me want to default to the belief that it is worse. But then again, I could be wrong, of course. Third base finishes for both players at a very similar time. Evo Chambers on the way as well. Cero up two workers. And... That's a second gas here and a road warren in the back. Of course, that's the beauty of having a two building wall that you don't actually need to put the road warren in there. Plus one range on the way for a Ragnarok. Plus one carapace on the way for Serral. So Serral, once again, starting with a carapace upgrade over his range. I really believe this to be uh, inferior for Serral. I mean, last time he made up for it by having some fantastic early game, but the carapace upgrades is just it does less for you, quite a bit less for you, and it's more expensive, which makes life even worse. Like it's great if you're planning on fighting Ling Bane against Ling Bane, and the other guy's getting a range upgrade, and you have carapace, and your opponent forgets that range upgrades don't work on links. Yeah, that's nice, but that's why most of the time when we see carapace, it's for an all-in, so that the links can survive another Baneling hit. You now you're building both Roaches, Lynx, and Bane, so the Carapace is kind of the overlapping factor there. Oh, let's get blocked out properly. Nice moves out of Serral once again. These Bane Link's in a little bit of trouble. Two Overlords getting uh, popped out of here. Ten drones coming in for Ragnarok. Is this too many drones, or is this the perfect amount of drones? I don't know. I love what Serral's doing here. Look at this. He's transferring drones over from his natural to his third. Ragnarok sees that and throws down a Spire, two more gases, he's like, huh, <laughs> oh, this idiot, look at him building drones, I'm building a Muda. But this is supposed to kill Muda. Carapace builds are supposed to kill Mudas. Oh, that is absolutely brilliant. I love these fake drone transfers. Double fake gas as well here. Serral completely trying to fool his opponent. And I think he's doing a pretty decent job here. Oh. Oh, gas is even being taken. This is fake, this is fake. Absolutely fake. Look, immediately pulls out of gas. Did Ragnarok buy it? Did Ragnarok buy it is the question. I think he didn't because he's spending a lot of cash right now into roaches. Has 11 roaches out already. Don't forget, he does have the plus one upgrade. There's a Krapton. Actually, there's not that many links. But there's only seven links. There's three Bane links. Ten roach advantage, though, for Serral. More and more roaches coming out for Ragnarok as well. Glyar Reconstitution halfway done. Did the Spire get cancelled? Yes, Spire got cancelled. We have two spines on the way. Ragnarok knows that if he holds this, he pretty much wins the game because he's up 15 workers. He has a better upgrade and he's going to have Roach Beat. Here comes Serral. Banelings moving forward as well are going to burst into these Roaches. And this is looking pretty darn good here for the young Finn. Perhaps about to be up 2-0, although army supply still close. A lot of that army for Ragnarok still in the axe right now. Nine more Roaches about to pop out. Drones being pulled and the first spine finishes up. Serral's actually running out of steam right now and might be forced to transition yes he's gonna be forced to transition we see a layer behind this we see plus one range starting as a ragnarok hold still up six workers has a layer already and has the superior upgrade should start plus two immediately and that's indeed what we see does not go for a chase with his own roaches despite having the roach speed there's 36 links out on the map currently and the spire gets thrown down again as well so many different types of advantages here for ragnarok and if I'm being honest, actually zero types of advantages here for Serral. Uh, slower layer, slower upgrades, a worse roach count, no roach speed. More queens, though. Three queens versus one. So, woohoo! I mean, that might be nice in the early game if you're trying to drone a lot, but with pure unit production, I don't think it's going to change anything here. Ragnarok starts moving out across the map, has uh, 30 roaches that are getting across. Two ravagers being built as well. Here comes the flank out of Serral. Uh, I'm not so sure if this is going to be a similar hold as last time, though. Fight looks fairly similar, actually. Oh, no. 
A couple of Biles wouldn't hurt, but yeah, Lynx just die a bit too fast. Sarah will hold and get a way better trade than he ever should have. Perhaps getting him back into the game a little bit. Plus two got cancelled. Oh, wow. Rather than going for plus two, I think Ragnarok's plan here is to actually mass Mutas. What? It felt like the, the plus two was such a huge advantage that you could pretty much carry into a... Very far into the mid game. Now he's gonna start plus two, but yeah, I'm not a fan of this at all. I'm not a fan of this at all. Lynx might even get a scout on these mutalis. So far, not the case. Eight mutas on the way. Do we have any spores? There are no spores. Is there any scouting going on? There's no scouting going on. Okay, here we go. Does it spot the mutas? Let's take a look at Sarah's vision here. Doesn't see it yet. Doesn't see it yet. First Mutas now start attacking. He's like, uh-oh, that ain't good. That ain't good for sure. That ain't good for sure, my friends. Sarah's going for a counter-attack. It's gonna lose one or two Ravagers because of that. It's also not really up in Roaches, so... He's... <laughs> he's He's down in everything, and there's Mutas attacking him. So this is going to be a very difficult fight. Lynx will help out a little bit, of course, coming in with the surround. Three Ravagers still alive. Might be capable of actually hitting these uh, Roaches. Good control so far out of Ragnarok. Just running away, making sure he continues hitting as well at the same time. 32 Roaches for Cero against just 17. But the eight Mutas eventually should be capable of turning this around. The constant tickling damage of these Mutas just perhaps a little bit too much army supplies getting closer and closer and that is not a good sign for Cero because if they keep getting closer eventually mutas remain and mutas can't be killed that's, that's, that's really a, a very major issue five drones do go down on the side of Ragnarok but don't forget Cero's only on 51 is building hydras behind this but hasn't even started his own plus two yet so it's going to really struggle with a plus two push coming out of Ragnarok if Ragnarok ever wants to go for that on the retreat, a couple more roaches will, of course, fall. And now these Mutalists can start harassing. Taking out Overlords, perhaps taking out a drone here or there. One, two more roaches will go down. This Overlord may be in trouble. And Ragnarok takes a, a major supply lead, throws down a fort base, warps in, or sorry, morphs in. Eight Ravagers immediately as well. So I think he's going to be setting up for maybe like a 150, 160 supply push. As he starts working on all of those rocks for, for quicker reinforcements. Two Banelings are going to try and come in from the right side, but there's an Overlord here spotting for that. Ragnarok has very good vision, while the opposite is true for Cero. Uh, Miras will come back home to deal with this Overseer. But yeah, Ragnarok definitely in a bit of a lead here. And the plus two is such a huge deal. Such a huge deal here. And the larger the armies are getting, the bigger of a deal it's going to be. Sarah's still too afraid to start his own plus two. And don't forget Ragnarok also putting some economic pressure on his opponent by building this fort base. Probably doesn't want to really add any drones. Maybe two or three, but not more than that. Because he's pretty much on uh, solid saturation. Main base is about to run out. I think natural is pretty close to running out for both players as well and then you can just more optimally saturate your own fort base well Cero, well he's gonna struggle to, to get a fort base up to defend the fort base and i think that's where ragnarok wants to strike so getting more drones would kind of make it harder to strike if Cero ever wants to take a fort base and might expose him to like a maxed push out as well out of Cero. Cero still without plus two though and yeah, I, th I think if you have a situation in which there's plus two against plus one, even if there's a carapace upgrade around, it's going to just be really difficult. This is a bad start of the fight over Ragnarok. He missed basically every single bow, even hit his own roaches a little bit to start with. Um, plus two is helping, but Mutas aren't in this fight either. Cyril actually with a fairly decent little engagement there is going to continue chasing, takes out one Ravager and now will return back home. Almost up in supply, but still just down an upgrade. This is painful to watch. Ravagers being added as well here for Serral. Who has those 10 Hydras? Don't forget that in an even army supply situation, those Hydras are much, much better than Mutas ever will be. So if you have like 10 Hydras and your opponent has 7, 8 Mutas, yeah, I'd much rather be the, the Hydra player. This position is difficult to engage through though. Yeah, Serral is aware of that, of course. Queen's trying to defend the base. 
Uh, without plus two, I think this is almost impossible. I think it's almost impossible to break this if you're down an upgrade and your opponent has more Ravagers. And getting up ramps should, should be impossible. Ragnarok actually was out of position. Uh, funnily enough, that really would have helped Cheryl if he would have just straight up ran up there. Uh, now this fight is going to be quite difficult. This is a nice angle, though, that the Finn is taking. Uh, but we have such a beautiful concave as well for Ragnarok. Piles hitting, uh, Roach is connecting. Everything is shooting here for Ragnarok. As Cheryl yeah, tries to go in. Hiders are going to get connected by Roaches. GG gets caught, and Ragnarok ties up the series in game number two. Ragnarok struggling a little bit there to uh, finish the game in proper fashion, but... Uh, Cheryl couldn't grab it back. Really felt like uh, at some point that he, got, he was getting close and the push against the Muras got a little close. Ragnarok with a huge lead though. Two times Carapace build so far out of Cheryl and not entirely working out. I mean, if you're not killing Muda builds with it, then I'm wondering what the point is really. Because that was a, a Roach into Muda build and it didn't get, you know, Ragnarok survived. So makes you wonder hatchery gets thrown down here in the natural both players going pretty ham with that this is the third time we're seeing hatch first in this series for both players both players also send out their overlords right now there's something exciting about the early game in zvz usually and when both players go for the hatch first it just isn't quite as exciting. You know, it's, it's, it's just slightly less exciting. Because you, you miss the, the enticing link stuff. Uh, like one guy building six links. And dodging overlord paths that they've researched before, before the game. That type of... I don't know. It's just... Something beautiful about that. There really is something beautiful about that. Pool should be thrown down here for Cheryl. Oh, it's already at the pool. Oh, sorry, Queen should start soon for both players, is what I meant to say. And the pool also should have been thrown down for Cheryl. If Cheryl did not have a pool at this point, he'd be in some major trouble, my friends. That is not a good look at the World Championships for getting your pool. There's a fun story. I think it was IPL 3, maybe? Or IPL... I think it was IPL 3 or IPL 4, in which in a lower bracket match, it was the Muslim versus Scarlet. This was the first big tournament for Scarlet. And the Muslim went for a proxy two racks. And Scarlet, rather than building a spawning pool, accidentally built an Evo chamber. And then she asked for a regame. Or I'm not quite sure what happened, but I think a regame got, got you know, the Muslim agreed with a regame. And then the Muslim lost the regame. And then I think actually ended up losing the series and got knocked out of the tournament. Which is fairly unfortunate. It's when, uh... I also don't think that is fair play in a way you know if, if someone messes up like that in the early game they deserve the loss and i would have taken it uh you know i respect the muslim for saying all right we'll regame but no way jose i would have taken a free win there immediately no problem maybe i'm just a bad person i think it was ipl3 ipl4 i can i just can't remember it I can't remember it at all So long ago. That must be over 10. Yeah, that is over 10 years ago for sure. Because it was Wings of Liberty. Maybe 2012. Metabolic boost here for uh, for both players coming out. Fairly similar timing. Bailing Ness also going down. I really loved how Serral did that initial Link Flood in the first game. Almost feels like a waste to not go for something along those lines again, you know? Like, it just feels good. His micro felt so on point. It feels like a waste not to you know, make something like that happen once more. Oh, here we go. Just zooming around a little bit. Evo Chamber, Rogue Warren. Coming down as well. An extractor popping out. If Cyril goes for another carapace, well, I'm actually going to lose my mind. Ooh. Scout comes in for the first time in a very long time. Uh, first two games, that never actually happened. Cyril also got a scout in or no? No. So it's only, uh, only Cyril that messed this up. The defense. Ragnarok. Continuously moving this queen into position. Yeah, Cyril tries, but doesn't succeed. 
When you try so hard, but you don't succeed. Ah, must suck. Layer on the way for both players. I think plus one slightly quicker here for, uh, for Ragnarok. Double gassing on the third base already. He has an extra gas in the main as well. Might be looking, perhaps, once more at uh, Miralisk. Yeah, six gases. It is going to be Muralisk here out of Ragnarok. And this is no care. Ooh, almost gets the scouts in. Almost get the scout in. But not quite. No, wait, it's not six gas. He doesn't have the natural gases. Oh, I got very excited for nothing, didn't I? I did just get... He's building a spine? It's a, I wonder what he saw. Who hurt you in your past, Ragnarok, that you want to build a spine here? Maybe the spine is a mind game. Maybe the spine is a mind game. Okay, listen to this. This is gonna sound dumb. I think the spine is a mind game. This is a mind spine. He's pretending to be scared right now. So that Sarah will not think that Ragnarok is building a lot of roaches. While in reality, Ragnarok is cutting workers and building pure roach. But then also Inspire and Drones. Okay, it wasn't a mind game spine. He actually was afraid. Never mind. I said nothing. That would be a sick mind game though, no? Like, it's one of those things I do in PvP as well. If I see that my opponent has a battery on the third base, I'm like, ah, this guy's too afraid to, you know? He thinks I'm gonna attack him at his third soon. Like he's building a battery there. Then I know that I'm safe. And I can skip the battery on my own third. You know? It's like, ah, this guy's afraid. <laughs> Idiot. I was planning on attacking at all. I'm a passive player. I'm a bit of a loser. Afraid of life. Afraid to move out. I thought that was Ragnarok here was faking that, you know? Sometimes I actually do fake a battery on my third. Sometimes they even build two batteries on my third. When a in vision of a hallucination. And then they cancel the batteries and you all in. It's a it's a beautiful move. It is it really is a beautiful move. I love that type of stuff. It's like these these little things that you can do too many times, you know. You can do it once or twice and then people will catch on. Then you don't do it for a while and you do it again. It just feels good to do. I think the yeah, the spire definitely did get scouted. So Serol is going to be the defensive player with Roach Hydra. Two one upgrades. Very good upgrades, actually, coming in for him. And then most likely followed by an infestation pit. While Ragnarok goes for Spire. What is it? 5 6 Muras. And then into Roaches. No. No. It's a fake. No, it's not. Well, this is the second time Ragnarok tricked me. I thought it was a fake Spire and he was just going to Roach attack. Well, he's Roach attacking. But I... This shouldn't work, should it? I mean, had a pretty decent fight, honestly. I feel like the Roach counts were too close for this to, to, to work and for this to happen. Saddle's down 7-8 Roach. Is he dead? Did Saddle just die accidentally? Classic accidental death. I think so. So maybe it was a trick to Spire, uh, giving giving Cero a fake sense of security on the ground. Like, hey, you have to prepare for my Mutas. Cero started preparing for the Mutas, and then the Roaches are the ones that dealt the real damage. Now Spores are going to be too late as well. Roach counterattack coming in, but lots of drones already are going down. Roaches being built defensively here for Ragnarok behind this. I don't think these 20 Roaches are going to be enough. Eight drones have gone down, and... I think all of these roaches are just going to die. This will be a very favorable trade for Ragnarok, who is going to be down in upgrades, but has the Muras for map control, has the Muras for some added in damage as well. And a lot of roaches here are falling at a very high pace. Uh, maybe Overseers could go down. No, Muras actually trading against the Hydra Lisk. One, two, three, four Hydras are all dying. Yes, four Hydras have gone down. Overlord's also in some trouble right now. Mm, this Hydra is gonna get blasted. Maybe another Hydra. No, this is a this is a full-on attack. This is an assault here on Serol, and I think it's working. It's 27 Roaches, seven Mudas, and Serol kind of needs to balance between the Roach and the Muda. Now the Roach is good against the Roach, and the Hydra is good against the Muda. So these Roaches are good against Hydras. You want a Roaches against those? I think too heavy, too heavy on the Hydras here for Serol. He needs 7-8 Hydras, but because he lost so many initially, he probably was afraid of more Mutas. Because he lost like 4 or 5 immediately. And now he's in trouble. He's down 40-50 supply. 
He is still up and up two upgrades. He's up a plus one in range and a plus one in carapace. But supply-wise, this ain't looking looking all that hot. No Ravagers either in this army yet. There's two Ravagers out for Ragnarok, who's maxed out. Here we go, 137 to 92. Ragnarok just moves forward. Throws down a couple of vials here. And almost walks into it himself. It doesn't quite. Hydra's trying to get back into position. I think this is game. Double the supply right now for Ragnarok. As Serral busy dying. Oh, no. 60, 70 supply down. GG gets called. And Ragnarok with the win here. Putting himself on match point. What a ballsy strat here to pick on match point. 12 pool. I understand it. Every single game so far has been a hash first out of both players. Ancient Cistern. Is this a good map for the 12th pool? I don't know. It is relatively large. Maybe he has a, a path with the links, the Dutch Overlords, that I'm not aware of and that Serral's not aware of. Um, but it, it, it does feel like... Uh, I mean, it's a cool build. This is, a, this is extremely high tier play. I love this. And the coolest thing is that it most likely is pre-planned, right? Ragnarok plans a build for every single map majority of the time that's what most players do and this is just how the series developed so he's up 2-1 and he's on match point and now he's playing this build like if he was down 2-1 i think he also would be playing this build because most builds just get decided beforehand oh i think this is so cool i really like this type of stuff gas first into pool so technically the worst possible build order for several gas into pool hatch first into gas well if you were to play three hatch before pool then that would be worse but no one plays that so it's unlikely that that would have happened drones are being pulled off the line as well oh it's a spine rush with it and more drones being pulled. okay it's a it's a full-on drone pool it's a full-on drone pool here i guess whenever you take the three initial drones you're always going to do that tries to dodge the overlords here of his opponents don't think he's going to be capable of staying out of vision unless he goes through the middle but he doesn't go through the middle so this is going to get spotted here by this ov sees the three drones and knows exactly what's up uh, it's going to start building uh, a lot of links oh, already has the 20 a drone though triple evo chambers on the way okay this is i think to delay the drones from building the spines forcing the opponent to move around this only wins a couple of seconds but it can be a huge deal it can be a huge deal these three, four extra seconds, perhaps all he needs as the links are now popping out. And that's what the pool is for as well in this position. So th this was a predetermined Evo defense if this would have happened. Okay, here we go. Good initial hit there. I think one link has gone down already on the side of Ragnarok. Drones now attacking the spines, making sure they don't go up. This feels really good for Serral, honestly. Once the first queen pops and the spines don't finish, the game pretty much ends. But it is important that the spines don't finish. This fight isn't looking all that hot, though, for Serral down here. But up here, everything is okay. Spine does finish. Gets two hits in and then three hits. No, die. GG gets called. Serral with the mathematically perfect defense here, placing every structure exactly exactly where it belonged look at that i want to go over there one more time that was beautiful would you look at that knowing exactly what to do he he knew what was good all right puff puff not a moment of hesitation well I took out one too many drones uh, no more gas mining coming in and just goes ham boom queen double links more links in the natural no queen in that natural yet i guess you started after you cancel the evos this was a beautiful defense yeah Wow, I love that so much. That was great. That really was a great play. Pfft, what a defense. What a defense. What a crazy good defense. Fantastic hold out of Saro. Man, I love this type of stuff. I know the Evo Chamber hold has been done before, but I just love that he was prepared on, I guess, every single map where it was a possibility. I, I bet he had this prepared everywhere. And then when you get to use it and it succeeds, it feels really good. I can only imagine. Oh, that was beautiful. Ragnarok community is like, all right, that was it for today, my friends. Uh, back, to, back to the hatch first. We had a good run, but uh, never again. At this time, the pool gets built somewhere else. I guess it's not possible on this map because the, the, the creep doesn't quite touch the, the edge. So then you're, you're forced to do... Well, I guess you can't do it. That's it. I know there's some maps where Zerg players build a hatchery. So they all... I'm not sure if they cancel their... I don't think they cancel their natural because you need the larva from there. Build like a, I wonder if you could wall the top of your ramp with like hatchery a triple hatchery you cancel this don't build a queen would that be possible like hatch 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 
I'm gonna test it after this game. But I think you can always walk through two hatches next to each other, no? Unless they're fully touched. I'm not sure how that works. I don't actually ever wall with Nexi, so I, I don't know what works if two main buildings are next to each other. I've actually never done that. I'm gonna try that after the game. If it works out, I might tell you all about it. That'd be interesting. Okay, um, anyway. Final game here in this best of five. Yes, we have uh, Hash First versus Hash First. Third base coming out of Cerro. Third base coming out of Ragnarok. Builds his hatchery later though. Builds it at 32 supply. I wonder if that's better or worse. Once again, my rule of thumb is usually if the other Zerg players haven't copied it, it's worse. And because most Zerg players go for a 13 hatch, I guess it is worse. Or it's like a trade-off somewhere that the majority of the Zerg players don't like. That I'm not aware of. It does seem like he has two more workers right now though. I guess one worker is due to Sarah building two more links. I don't know where the other one comes from. Ooh, that's a lot of links here for Ragnarok. That's eight links. Very quickly. Is he hiding these? Oh yeah, he is. Going to be a Baneling attack. Ooh, okay, no, Sarah's also Baneling attacking. Exact same position. Might get spotted though. Does get spotted. That pretty much ends the uh, attack here out of Saro. These two get into the main. Not going to morph into anything either. Just a scouting, scouting pair. Banes are morphing. Two in the back. Oh, I didn't even catch these. And neither did Ragnarok. Oh, yo, is there any Banes at home right now for Ragnarok? I don't think so. If these Banes get cleared, that's it. Ooh, did he just lose his Banes for free? I think he might have. Didn't look like such a solid defense there for Cyril. going to lose one more Bane. This Bane also dies. Second Queen in a little bit of trouble. No, Cyril does not want to engage into this. Does have another Bane coming in. Two more being morphed at the same time. Oh, this looks okay for our Finn, I think. If that dies. Yeah, both players just losing morphing Banelings right now. 33 workers to 32. Ragnarok is going to be happy with that defense, except for the fact that he lost a Queen. Now, losing Queens is never nice. I don't wish that upon anyone, but a uh, favorable position for Zero Carapace upgrade for Ragnarok. It is Ragnarok who's going to put on the pressure here this time around. Evo Chamber very delayed for Zero. Very, very delayed for Zero. He was hoping to do more with this Ling Bane push and did not quite manage to get that. Yes, he cleared a queen, but he lost more gas. I'm not sure how. He must have lost a lot of morphing banes or something. Otherwise, it makes no sense that he lost more gas. Oh, wait. If you... If you don't lose a Bane Link, but it just you explode it, then it doesn't count as a unit lost, I think. Maybe? I don't know how it works. But otherwise, this makes... I don't know. I don't understand how these taps work. It is difficult and confusing. I will never speak again. Yeah, I don't know. Seems weird. Anyway. Ooh. Sarah coming in from the side with some Banes. Ooh, could potentially get these drones. We'll get two, three. Three drones being taken out. And Sarah continues droning up himself as well. Now starts the roaches. All the way up to... Uh, what's the supply? For 52 drones? Can he get enough out, actually? I think so, right? Doesn't have plus one, though. He just doesn't have plus one. Did he forget? He's getting a layer before plus one. I think he wants to... F and now five more drones. Oh, no. Sarah. He's not understanding what's going on here. Has he not spotted the roaches moving out? Oh, the roaches haven't moved out yet. And no wonder he hasn't spotted them moving out. It's impossible. Do think that these roaches now got spotted. And what? More drones? Four more overlords as well. Fifteen workers in favor of Serral. The army supply is still relatively even as well. Ragnarok is going to, to send it soon. He's going to be up an upgrade. Ser Wait, is Serral... What is Serral doing? As I run by here, now starts his plus one finally. But that's so darn late. What are you doing? He's up 14 works. Okay, there's not enough drones here, is there? Or maybe there is. I don't know. More roaches. One more drone as well. Pure roach production at this point for Sarah. That's all he wants. Look how long Ragnarok is waiting until sending it. This is all being spotted, though. Like, oh, this <laughs> 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 it's all being seen. I don't know. Mm -hmm. These links. 
They're passing by. Out of vision. Now these are moving in vision. Oh, that's a nice move out you got there, buddy. Spines, spines, spines immediately, or... Not a possibility. Perhaps not a possibility. This looks like a defense to me, though. 21 roaches against 23. Yes, there is an upgrade lead, but you can still pull drones as well. Uh, we have a bunch of banes being built right away. This is an okay start off the fight. Banelings connect with some links. More banelings coming in right now. Do get some decent connections. 120 supply for Saril. Army supply in favor of Saril right here. As, uh, well, he's actually gonna get surrounded by some links. Loses the roach fight, perhaps. Queen's still up as well, but supply heavily in favor of Saril. More and more roaches are about to come out. Is there a spine about to finish? No, it is just now starting. He's going to get surrounded. 103 supply against 85. As, uh... Yeah, Ragnarok is moving forward at a high pace. GG, well played. Good luck at Skull. Spice Arrow still being up a little bit in supply. It's hard to say if he would have been capable of holding. It was nine roaches against seven, though. And all roaches were here. 29 links is quite a lot. The spine was far away from finishing. There was no more queens. Nah, that's pretty over. All right, that's going to be it for me today. Thanks all so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy this best of five. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hopefully I'll see all of you next time for a new video. Bye-bye.